Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be joined by today's guest to talk all about the holiday movie Funny Thing About Love. We're joined by Adam White, who is the writer and director of the film, as well as cast members John Heater, Summer Belessa, Brooke White, Kayvon, and Jason Gray. And Adam, since you wrote and directed the film, I wanted to start by asking about the way in which, uh, you know, as a holiday movie, there's certain beats, there's certain arcs within narratives that sometimes, you know, we have an anticipation of where the story might go and yet you also have to weave that in with unexpected moments for characters and arcs. So what are some of the places in which you really wanted to have traditional elements of a holiday movie and some of the places where you really wanted to break outside of that facet as well? Oh yeah, great question. I, I mean, I think that I think that you can't, like a romantic comedy, like what can you do that's new, right? Like it's been done 10,000 times. So I think the trick became just to find moments where you could take a, something that was a typical cliche moment in a romantic comedy and a holiday romance and, and make it not cliche, you know, add an element to it that made it funny or, you know, and as you can tell from the, from the cast here, um, there was a lot of great chemistry, you know, on set. And so it would just, it made it easy to let these guys just make it funny and, and, and shine through. So yeah, it was really just trying to find, things that we could do to, to take away the, what you would typically predict in a movie and make it different. Yeah. And, and speaking of the cast, I love that you're all in, in the same room together. Um, right I, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've been in that room ever since you shot the movie. We've been quarantining <laughs> yeah. for the last three days. It sucks. <laughs> 12 more days. Well, there's so many wonderful opportunities for you all to explore, not only just your individual character details, but also who they are within so many different interpersonal dynamics because of the number of ensemble scenes that take place within the film. So I was interested for all of you in how that really allowed you to explore a lot of different facets within your characters in the way that Adam wrote those scenes. Was that a question? Yeah. <laughs> it, it was a sneak. Yes. yes, is the answer. We, yeah, it was I really feel fun. good about that. Yeah. No, I mean, it is, it's a family. And so there's, it's, it's all about those interactions between us as family. And then this, yes. and then this guy who, well, actually, no. Then there's this guy yes. who's not family. We tend to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. One <laughs> of us doesn't no, belong. We do here. love you. Though. Well, it's hard when you're only four feet tall. <laughs> no, wait. We, we, so we have we have we have Summer here who is the the lead, the, the lead and she is. So I'm her brother. Yeah. This is my wife and my BFF and her best friend and BFF in real life. Also. Yes, in real life. And this and is the, my brother. Yeah. Who was her ex boyfriend? Ex boyfriend. Ex -boyfriend. And this is my new boyfriend. That's the new guy. Yeah. And so we're yeah. torn. Yeah. Who do we, we would want? We just like to get him out of here. Yeah, you know? just kidding. <laughs> Our family tree is more of a wreath. It is. And even in shooting the film, we were like, "Wait, wait, wait." Okay, so if he marries, uh, if she no, if she he's marries her uncle. ex. Then he's well. He's already an uncle. Yeah, but he'll he would be, a, be double, a double uncle. uncle. But then we were realizing a double. A double, a double. Yeah, that doesn't even make sense. So what other kids? There's only one set of kids, but maybe some of the. People. All right, let's 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 corral this back in, John. Oh, well, we're just getting started. Okay. Has more questions. Those. I love it. And Summer, I wanted to talk to you about the way in which you shaped your character. There's so many different facets that you get to explore with her from who she is within her family dynamic, who she is as an entrepreneur and as a businesswoman. Um, and there's the great arc about whether she sells her business which or not, which really actually tells us a lot about, you know, her internal passion and drive and what it is that, that really drives her forward as a character. Um, and so what was that journey of taking the details that Adam had written into the script in all of those different layers and textures, and then really working on fleshing and building that out for your character? Well, I think it was really interesting because my journey as a businesswoman and my, my love life, they definitely are mirrored in this. And, mm -hmm. you know, the pros and cons to both sides of things in a relationship and also in real life in business, well, really in business. And so I think it was interesting to kind of go through that journey of what you think you want and what you really do want and, and the differences that those um, different paths can make. And it was fun to do it with these guys and, and have a great time like exploring that. And they're both hilarious and they were so fun to work with, but it's interesting in your mind, like um, as an actor trying to, you know, imagine what your life would be like with both things and, and as a businesswoman also, it's definitely gives you some interesting things to experience and think about. 
And Summer had, had started a real business in her real life and sold it for 15 million. No, 15 million. So she could really relate <laughs> she, to this, this character. Is, this I did. Struggle. I Why did are you start doing this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did start a clothing line and I had a fashion magazine. Which is how this. I met her, yes. actually, through your yeah. fashion line. And so I, really I did I could definitely pull from that yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 And I really had Thanksgiving dinner before. So that was really easy to <laughs> yeah. anchor me. <laughs> And then Summer and John, you know, there's what I love about the sibling relationship between your two characters is the fact that it's not about animosity. It's not about trying to one up each other. It really comes from a place of heart and love. Um, and so how did the two of you work together to really build out, you know, their backstory, their history, what that sibling dynamic was going to be, particularly because you get to look at their entire family dynamic and a lot of the traditions that they share as well? Well, uh so like a couple of weeks prior, I went to her uh, family's house in Phoenix and we, I just like hung out with them to like try to build yeah. that, find it. We couldn't yeah. really find it. It was a big, her family was really annoyed. It was a big waste of time. So we just found it on set in the yeah. moment where I was like, oh, I should have done that all along. Yeah, um, a waste of a trip. Was, but I mean, I got a lot of free food. Um, <laughs> but it was, uh, it was fun because, well, we, the more we talk about the character, it's like, I think, uh, uh brooks character of mine like uh the husband and wife we're like trying to make our lives i think more convenient i think we're yeah. pretty selfish well just like let's just like, finish this yeah. this equation this on be easy. i yeah. married your brother or your sister no, no. Uh, how do you marry no. it is so confusing i'm i'm I, i'm married to her brother and i want her to be married to my brother let's yeah. just yeah. take this clean and easy yeah yeah but it was obviously it was so easy to calculate that whole thing out yeah. but you know what i'm saying well, Wait, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. gonna say we also shot during quarantine, so we all were quarantined together in a hotel. Obviously, we had our different different rooms, but we would all hang out <laughs> and obviously, <laughs> and we'd watch Bachelor, and it really helped bond us and really feel like a family. Thank you, Bachelor. Yeah, we yeah. couldn't have done it without the Bachelor. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love it. Well, similarly, uh, Brooke and Kayvon, I wanted to ask you about building the the dynamic between the two of you because, especially with the character of Annie, you know, she's the one who's leaning the hardest into trying to put this couple back together. But it also feels like that comes from a place of closeness with her brother and the fact that she really knows exactly what he wants, and they've had a lot of conversations about this together. Yeah, I see. As, as two great compatible people who are go-getters obviously they have mm -hmm. big dreams and big aspirations but they're great people and it the only reason that they didn't work before is because they just chasing you know, they, those dreams chasing those dreams it was just the timing and now it's like the timing's right yeah and as a sister she's just she brings so much life to the set. When Brooke walks in, everybody knows it. Really? And she, yes. And, Mostly due to volume. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and and she's easy to get to know. So to pretend she's your sister, that's just a natural. Yeah, he is my brother, right? I love it. We want to do a spin-off movie if it's possible. Adam's working on that, I think. <laughs> totally. Is he? Nope, he's nope. not. I think he just <laughs> said he's not. Not without my sister. <laughs> And Jason, was there a challenge for you with this character? Because, you know, the movie very much kind of leads us down this path of he's just not the right person for her to be with and he's not quite the right fit. And so you're leaning into some of his worst behaviors and, and attributes. And yet at the same time, you're also balancing a line where you don't want to make him a villain. You want to still have the audience understand what brought these two people together in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a trick. I feel like I... Most people said I did a pretty good job of balancing that. You're like a lovable villain. Like, we don't want you to end up with her, but uh, <laughs> we still like you. <laughs> but my dad, who watched the film, was like, I hated you from the first second. <laughs> <laughs> Rooting against you. But that might just be some underlying, like, thing. Father-son issues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Anything people... you do, I just hate. <laughs> Well, my dad liked your performance. Yeah, right. see, yeah. other dads like me. Well, so. yeah. <clears throat> spoiler, at the end of the film, we wanted, like, we were rooting for him to, like, go on to- Oh, yeah, don't spoil Wait, Listen, here's the thing. This is a nice guy for someone <clears throat> else. That's yeah. just all it comes down to. And I do think that Adam did a, a, a good thing in this script by making um, him and Luke have that little kind of romance, like, obsession that he had and it was such a fun place for him to play around with and made him more likable and funny and fun it was it made it 100%. is hard to hate this guy even though yes. we do you know because yeah, make no mistake yeah. he just was like just so funny with you yeah well on a one-sided bromance is very funny because usually you see it both guys are you know like the other bromance but when it's just one guy doing all the work, yeah. I think it's even funnier it's, it's, it's very endearing and he does it, it was really endearing well. yeah 
And off the back of that, Adam, what was the genesis behind wanting to write, you know, that that burgeoning male friendship in that way where Bryce is the person who laughs the hardest at every single joke that Luke's, Luke makes? Yeah, it wasn't like that initially in the script. I, In fact, it was just kind of your typical villain. And I'm like, this guy's boring. What would make him a lot funnier is if he was Luke's number one fan. And now he's in love with Luke, you know, while Luke's trying to steal his girlfriend. You know, and that that to me just seemed like a much funnier premise. And, you know, of course, then you could just do all these scenes that just, you know, every time Luke's getting close, Bryce comes in and like just literally spits in his face. You know what I mean? And, and kills his kills his dreams. So it, it, and and does it smile like thinking they're best friends the whole way? It's just, just a funny to me it was a funny idea. So. And with the writing as well, because so much of the way that we get to see these characters is through interpersonal dynamics. What was your your journey when you were working on the script initially in figuring out who these characters were and then figuring out the different ways that you could play into different beats of them, like that that burgeoning friendship, in order to see different sides of them as you started to put them together in the script? I think there's probably just a little a piece of me in every one of those guys, every, every one of the characters. You know, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, like like Samantha is, you know, I'm, I'm literally the same age as Charlie, you know, I have kids and, um, you know, I'm probably a little bit like Bryce sometimes. I don't know, but I think there is some of me in all the characters. And so it, when it, it, I wrote this during the lockdowns, it, it just like, they all just gained their voice really quickly. I come from a family of eight kids. Right. So I'm just, you know, I'm used to big families and, and I don't know, somehow that I was just able to just, see the characters, give them a, a unique voice. And then then they would tell me what they should be doing in every scene, you know, to make it funnier, so. I didn't know my character was 52. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I mean, hopefully I uh, sold it. <laughs> You're definitely, you definitely play 52 well. Yeah, I mean, I gave him a couple gray hairs, you know. Yeah. And you all mentioned, obviously, shooting in, in COVID times for this movie has really shifted the way in which you're able to work on scenes, how much time you're able to have before you even go into shooting something, rehearsal periods. And so what was that that process for this film in terms of the time that you had to spend together before you were shooting scenes in order to have conversations, find the rhythm, find the comedic beats, both kind of in pre-production and when you were on set all together as well? Is that for me or for them? Oh, you're going to answer. all of you. Well, no, uh, the good news is the actors didn't have to wear masks. So that was the big workaround. We were unmasked the whole time. <laughs> but what I mean, obviously, during COVID and also being kind of a last second, like a lot of this was put together kind of right before we had to do the table read all over Zoom. Yeah. Zoom. And, and most of us had not met each other. So wow. there was that kind of, well, I mean, I mean, some, yeah, well, obviously there's some people who knew each other. But still, it was like we didn't have time. So a lot of it really was found just on set during production. And But since there's so many scenes with all of us together, we were always there. I think that was a great thing. We did do the, I did, I had everybody come over to my house, you know, and the, like the day before we shot, and we just literally played family games as, as a family, right? Like, let's, right. let's all meet each other. And, and so we just played games in my house for a night just to, so everyone could get to know each other a little bit because because it was a tight schedule because of COVID we didn't have a lot of pre-production time you know no rehearsal time so we just, that was kind of a, was the a villain workout. he wasn't invited so it's true um, <laughs> and I think he was there hanging out at the hotel I was like what about Jason I was like no no we no, have to he's hit not him. invited we want to make this very real method. Method, yeah. 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 yeah I mean we're, I think it's it just kind of worked out that um, Adam picked a good group of people that likes each other and we're able to work well together. And that was just kind of, it's just that little magic chemistry that we were all able to, to find with each other very quickly, which is like, we've all been friends forever, you know? Yeah. And Adam, I also wanted to talk about the production design elements that you bring into the film and, and how you set about mapping out what you wanted this family home to look like, because it is such a reflection of who they are. And there's so many details from like, what are the decorations that they put up as a family? What are the things around the table for them at Thanksgiving? You know, and even down to the giant leopard print chair that the grandfather is sitting in, in the living room up against the, the rest of the furniture. And so how did you want all of the production design details to really be a reflection of these characters in the film? Well, I, I wish I could take credit for that, but I, but it really was, we were, it, we were, it was a matter of circumstance really, you know, on a tight budget, on a tight schedule, 
you know, the, the family that let us use their house for a week, they were just, we just basically used what they had. That's inappropriate, John. Um, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they had the big leopard chair and we're like, you know, it'd be hilarious if we put grandpa Joe in front of everybody else on this huge chair, because, because when you have somebody at that age, that's in the house, you typically just kind of have to bow to their needs. Right. And just, it's just the way it is. So it, and that's, that's been received really well in the screenings that we've done. Every time people see that, we cut to that shot. Everyone laughs so at him sitting in front of everybody. But yeah, um, Laura, Laura Conrad, she did a good job of, of creating the, like, the, the big set. The, the big design element was the Thanksgiving table, right? Because that's, that's the, the kind of the apex of the holiday, right? So, so that, and they did a great job. And we had some food bloggers prepare the food and, and just, you know, make it look beautiful. And, and then, and then uh, our... Jennifer O'Bannon, our, our wardrobe lady, just obviously made all of the, the wardrobe, just yes. took yeah, it to another amazing. level, right? Made the movie look way more expensive than, yeah. than it was. And then Adam and Kayvon, I wanted to talk about uh, Luke as a comedian within the film because we do get a moment where they go to his show, we get to see little kind of like snippets from within the show. Um, and you really have to sell that as a believable element of him as a character. And so in both the writing and directing of that scene, but also performing, I was interested in, in how you worked on that to really have that come forth. That was a lot of fun. I hadn't been on stage in almost a year at that time. So it's like, oh, we're doing a big comedy special for a movie? Wonderful. No practice in a while. But well, explain. I mean, I don't know if everybody knows, but you're a stand-up comedian. Real. In the movie, yeah. I'm a stand-up comedian. And in real life, I am. So I was just basically playing a part of that. And uh, many of the jokes I do on stage probably uh, wouldn't be appropriate for this family-friendly film. So <laughs> we went ahead and changed it all out. And every joke, you don't have to cringe. You can laugh with your grandma, your grandpa, okay. and your I think your they kids. just cut all the jokes out. Yeah, they just <laughs> cut them out. And, they kept uh, his uh, physical humor, which was still pretty gross. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, uh, there's some funny physical humor that I don't know what joke goes along with it, but uh, it, it looks good on camera. He was, you were really girl. taking up space on that yeah. stage. Yeah. He was working hard. At when, you yeah, we, when, I, when I, when I, look like when we were like casting this, that, that role, I was like, I need somebody who can pull this off. That I, I don't want to have somebody up there who, you, who obviously has never done stand up, and and you would never believe that they're a stand up comedian. Right. So, I was looking for a stand up comedian, and you know that's when I found Kayvon and reached out to him, and you know the rest is history. And if, if you do want to see the actual stand-up clip, then you can Google those. But in the movie, you see quick snippets, and you just have to believe that was hilarious. So funny. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this guy, he, yeah. I thought he was alone. Funny. Yeah. He, he tells you how funny I am. So, yeah. <laughs> And Adam, also with the, the editing and the post-production of the film, I was interested in hearing a little bit about that because so much of, of how comedy lands in the film is about the rhythm and the pacing and the timing, not only of the performances, but also kind of how you're piecing together those scenes in post-production. Um, and was that something where it, it felt very seamless in finding a lot of the rhythm and pacing as you were editing the film? Or were there any, any scenes in particular which you really found yourself having to play around with to find the minutiae a little bit more? Yeah, it was, we definitely found stuff as we edited, you know, like, for example, we, sometimes it was less is more, right? Like there's, there's a scene where when he, when um, Bryce first finds Luke at the house and he, and he begs him to do a scene, a, a comedy routine, we had a whole routine that, that, that Kayvon actually did. And, but it was just, it turned out to be way funnier to, to have Bryce not let him ever do the routine and just interrupt him and say, you're so funny on the, on the initial line. And then, <laughs> that just played a lot better. And so we ended up just cutting out the, the routine he did and, and it turned out to be funnier that way. So there, there were moments like that for sure that we just, you know, as we found as we edited, where it would be funnier, the timing and, and, and Josh Orm, our editor, you know, he's just an amazing editor and, and very good with, with the comedy and reactions and timing. So it, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. What's that, John? Oh, this wonderful! I I, I couldn't appreciating say, those editors. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a like, big job. He's yeah, trying. Josh is awesome. He did yeah. a really you guys did a good job. I want to say is watching it is um, getting all the facial expressions, the reactions, all those little nuances. I thought was really well edited. Yeah, that was all him. And John and Brooke, I also wanted to talk about the way in which you've built out the dynamic within their marriage. Um, you know, Adam, again, has put some really great details about things that really connect them to one another, whether it's Star Wars movies or Magic the Gathering. Um, and so how do the two of you work together to take facets of that and then really figure out what the specific connectivity between the two of them is within their relationship and who they are as a family? Yeah, I thought it was uh, it was it was really it was fun. It was easy to like um, kind of 
pull from my own life and, you know, you know, working, I both Brooke and I are married uh, Not to, to different other. people, <laughs> um, but working on that and bringing them on set to like see our own, no, no. diamonds, but it was, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it just felt like uh, we, uh, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that I deal with in my own marriage, just, you know, all my nerdy things and dealing with that. And although uh, you're probably the nerdy one in your- uh, Yeah, I am. I will say a couple things. I'd never heard of Magic the Gathering cards prior to this. And it was easy, easily my hardest line to deliver. (laughs) It was like gathering the magic, magic. I couldn't, I couldn't get it out, but- um, yeah, Star the first Wars time I say say it again, that was me Star giving Wars. her line yeah. readings. Like, no, say it again. Literally, uh, say he was say it again, you know. And, <laughs> and Adam's like, that say it. It. but the, yeah, the Star Wars, the Star Wars is great because I really that was true to me. That was one hundred percent true. Like, I was like, you really don't I like those. Uh, believe this. Does your wife not like? Oh, she, she not like nerdy things. Oh no, she's a, she. We okay. play video games together. That's so great. That's, that's, that's awesome. awesome. That's cute. Yeah. And for all of the cast in, in all of the scenes that you got to work on together, um, do any of you have a particular moment where you remember your scene partner really helping you to find a character moment or find a particular beat that you were looking for in a scene as you were working on these together? Uh, yeah, we had a, uh, a scene where I come in and interrupt the family watching uh, the Detroit Lions. Mm-hmm. And uh, the grandpa, uh, Grandpa Joe, Barry Corbin, he did such a good job of just being so upset with me interrupting the football game and i i like felt i mean it wasn't like i felt like he wasn't acting like i felt the actual <laughs> yes. like annoyance and it was just e- really easy to play off of that. <laughs> yeah yeah he nailed that scene he's the one that should be here right now not us <laughs> And, and then lastly, I'm going to kind of go around to each of you one by one about what you feel that you had the opportunity to really learn about your craft and learn about your work creatively from the opportunity to work on this film. Um, I'm going to start with you, John. Uh, it was, uh, you know, every, every project, every uh, role that you take, you hopefully find something that can challenge you, but also that you can bring to it and some more than others. This one, I really thought when I read it, I was like, oh, I think this feels very natural. Like this is more what I could be uh, just almost relaxing, like be myself, Mm -hmm. but, but putting that and playing that on camera. So it still takes work to be yourself on camera. It's just a different, it's almost a different kind of acting, but, um, but it was just, it was just very fun because it was my first time being able to be a dad, uh, be married in a film, you know, it's like, I I haven't been able to do that yet. And so uh, that was really freeing for me. Yeah. And for you, Brooke? Oh, sorry. Oh, are you going this way? Yeah. yeah go, go around. Summer's ready. Yeah. It's all right. Um, I, just gonna agree but, I would say, I think what I learned, or that's the question is, what would you learn? You, what did you yeah. learn? Um, I think it was about the dynamics between each other that was really where the magic was. It was just all about the kind of little quirky moments that we had with each other and really just um, depending on each other in that way. Like, we never have to make it about ourselves. It was always about each other. And I think that was like just a really fun dynamic about this is that it was, it is such an ensemble cast. And obviously Summer's my real life best friend. So it was so fun to get to go in and just do that. Like, like John said, he's really a dad. I'm really like, this is really my, my closest friend. So that was really fun. Yeah. I'll come to you next summer since I, I jumped over you before. No, I was just going to agree that I think my character also is maybe the closest I've ever played. Um, with her experiences and what what she goes through. And so I'd say the thing that was the hardest is how much how many lines I had to memorize and really getting that down so that it frees you to be yourself yeah. and and bring that in. And and again, like yeah, having this friendship already there and makes it a lot easier too. Yeah. And Kayvon? Uh I learned that no, I don't know what I learned. What did you <laughs> learn? <laughs> uh, the great thing watching the film for the first time which I enjoyed about the script was as the stand-up comedian, I get to be the straight man in this movie. <laughs> I know, it's where hilarious. Everyone is I am fu- too. I'm a, everyone I'm a is funnier sure. than me. And I love that because I get to just do it. Cause I'm there for a very serious reason. I'm there to try to win her back. Right. So uh, comedy mode is off, serious mode is on. And these guys are so funny that uh, I get to just have great reactions to that. Yeah, it's easy to be a good actor when these guys are doing all the heavy lifting. Yeah, And Jason? Yeah, I guess I had to learn to like kind of ride that line between villain, but also that you enjoy seeing him hopefully on screen. 
uh, when he comes back on. And uh, so, yeah, besides my dad, I think I was able to do that. But yes. uh, um, yeah, and, and I come from a sketch comedy background. So usually like the sketches only last three or four minutes. So it was really fun and a new challenge to do something that sustains for 90 minutes, which was great. We normally, he was normally pretty good for like eight, nine minutes. And then <laughs> we're like, just, Jason's got to go to his just room. No. Cut. Just like Turn into a pumpkin, you know, yeah. after that. <laughs> And last but not least for you, Adam. I'm lost. I'm at my well, I learned. I mean, yeah. Yeah, like, we don't have time to go over all that. But I, but I will say that I learned that I didn't love, like, it's weird because I didn't love filming during COVID because I had to wear a mask all the time. And if you can imagine with this group of actors trying to get a message across with a mask on. We don't you interrupt or anything. It's just like it turned out to be quite a challenge. Having said that, we may not have been able to do the movie had we not done it during COVID. So, I, you know, I don't, I'm glad we did it. Um, but yeah, you just learn so much, right? Like just when you make a movie, there's, you learn a million things. So I, you know, it was, it was a great experience. I learned a lot. I know who not to work with this next time and who who's okay. <laughs> and, uh, no, these are all fantastic people to work with and we had a great time and let's run back a sequel. Yes. Perfect. Can't wait. Can't wait for the follow up and, and the spin offs that are all going to come from this film. Right. Uh, thank you so much for sharing all of this and congratulations on the movie. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye.